Hi there! In this video we will discuss when to retrain machine learning models. Let us first recap why do we need to retrain machine learning models in the first place. The idea here is that models quality degrade with time. It happens because, well, our models interact with the real world environment and this environment is very rarely stable. Things tend to change and this is why our models tend to degrade. And our idea here is to detect this moment of time when models quality degrade, intervene and improve it so that we can have our machine learning service back on track. The good thing is that during the model usage we accumulate new data which we can use to retrain or update our model. Sometimes we have labeled data straight away, sometimes we need to send it for human labeling, but in any case, we accumulate new batches of data, which we can reuse later to update our models. Well, there are quite a lot of model retraining strategies, and I would like to present to you two main strategies, which are scheduled retraining and retraining by trigger. Let us start from the scheduled retraining. The idea here is very straightforward. Basically, what we need to do is to define a schedule and stick to it. It can be hourly retraining, daily, weekly or monthly. It depends on the use case and data stability. So there are quite a lot of pros here because it's a fairly easy solution and there are no overthinking. Just define the site on the schedule and stick to it. But there are some cons about this solution. Probably you will spend quite a lot of resources for retraining, especially if you do it quite often and it might cost you quite a lot. You will need to have quite complex architecture, because if you do retrain your model quite often, you probably want to automate such things, and together with the retraining, you will need to automate the model quality evaluation, model deployment, and that's quite complex, right? This will lead to more expensive support, especially for model automated retraining and automated deploy, and sometimes it can make things worse, especially if you do not have very solid procedure for model evaluation, and by chance you can deploy the model which is slightly or not slightly worse than the previous one. But in any case, generally this is the good enough solution and at least very good start. Luckily I have some tips for you. You can decide on the optimal schedule using historical data. So if you are lucky enough to have a lot of historical data, you can benefit from it. The idea here is that you can run quite a lot of experiments for defining things like speed of model decay, the amount of data you need to retrain the model, etc. etc. Let me, let me give you some more details here. For instance, you can fix the training set from your historical data and train a model on top of this training data set. Then you can start applying this trained model to the next batch of data. It still will be data from the historical part, right? but there will be more fresh compared to your training data. So what you want to do here is to apply this model to the new batch of data with a certain step, like for example daily, weekly, monthly, and measure model's quality. And this is important. That's important to make sure that you have your labels. In most cases, if you work with historical data, your labels are already arrived, I mean feedback or ground truth, whatever you use to compute model's performance metrics, but if you need to label some data, it makes sense to send this data for labeling before you start those experiments. Right, so after you applied your model to new batch of data, you can measure model's performance and see, for example, like here, that during the first three batches, model's quality is quite high, right? There is no need to retrain the model, even if you have enough data to do that, because there is no quality drop. But starting from the first batch, there is quality drop, right? So based on such experiments, you can come up with the good schedule. Together with speed of model decay, you can measure things like how much data do you need to retrain your model. Will more data actually improve model's quality? Should you drop the old data when retraining? Or you can combine the old training data with the new batch of data. 
maybe you should kind of reweight your objects. For example, maximize the train data by setting up the lower weights from, for the data from train and setting up higher weights for data from the new batch. So these are experiments which you can run on top of your historical data and based on the results, decide on your optimal schedule. Like, for example, combine the information and outcomes you get after the experiments about model quality, degradation speed, the amount of data you need to successfully retrain the model, and speed of getting the labeled data. So that's quite interesting experiments. We also have a huge blog related to the topic, so if you are interested in this scheduled retraining or a triggered retraining, take a look at our blog. And now let's move to the second strategy, retrain on a trigger. The example here is that, for instance, your key performance metric, let's say, is accuracy. And during your monitoring, you measure this accuracy, let's say, daily or hourly or even 10 seconds. As soon as you detect that the accuracy dropped, you can trigger the retraining deck, for instance, right? Retrain your model, then check the quality, and if you are happy with the quality, deploy the new model to production. So this is also a pretty automated script, right? So that's automated way to retrain your model, but not on a schedule, rather on a trigger. The good things here are that if you have pretty complex approval process, or maybe if retraining process costs you quite a lot, you always understand why you retrain your model and you don't do it for nothing. However, together with this, there are some considerations like this strategy requires proper monitoring system, right? Because you need to build your retraining strategy based on the alerts you get out of monitoring system and, well, your monitoring system should be ready for that. You also have a risk of missing a drop in the quality and losing money if you cannot really detect the very beginning of the model's quality drop process and you react kind of lightly. For instance, if you measure model's quality like daily, then you might miss the first day of the quality drop. That's your risks. Next, let us discuss model retraining trade-offs, because we do have quite a lot. It's essential to understand that model retraining is not just retraining. We need to complete some additional steps, like before the retraining, it's essential to generate a new dataset and check its quality, of course. Then we need to train a new model, which is quite costly, especially if it's a huge model and it takes quite a lot of computational resources. And then we need to evaluate our model, and for doing that you might need to create some specific data sets to model evaluation or sometimes even run an A-B test, right? And finally we need to update our service, so we need to archive the old model and launch the new one, which sometimes might be not that easy to do, right? So it's always good to understand that the retraining and model update comes with a cost, especially if you do not have solid architecture where all those processes are already automated. So it's good to measure the benefits from the improved sustained model performance versus the resources you invest into retraining model, like time, computational resources, human resources, support, and etc. Finally, I would like to introduce to you an example of how you can think through the training decision. First of all, it's very important to be pragmatic about model retraining. It's good to develop a strategy based on possible actions you have, service properties and other conditions like resources, model criticality and cost of model errors. For instance, you can come up with something like this. First of all, we need to measure whether the model's quality dropped, and if it did, it's important to check the data quality, because in most cases the model quality dropped because of the input data. Next, it's good to check what is the source of data quality issues, is there a data drift, do you have enough of data to retrain, and we can add some additional checks like whether we have any other systems to switch on, for instance, and other models, or maybe rule-based systems, and whether this alternative is better in terms of model performance, and if you have enough data to retrain the model, we might try to retrain it automatically and check the quality. So basically you can automate the logic and follow it in order to update your model in production. Now let's take a look at this logic in more details. I believe it might inspire you to create something similar, but more relevant to your use case. So our first step is 
check for model performance. Here we need to figure out did the model quality drop. It's always good to compare model quality against some baseline and check if the drop is real and has a correct window. I mean, it's very important to distinguish between the case where the quality dropped just on top of a couple of objects and generally model performs quite well with the case where the model's quality dropped over the whole batch of data and there is a problem indeed. After we understood that there is the model quality drop, it's important to check the data quality. For doing that, we can use tests based on the missing values or maybe distributions or other properties of our data like duplicates, out-of-range values, etc. And if there are some data quality issues, you need to fix those issues first. In most cases, it will help us to bring model's quality back on track. If there are no data quality issues, it might be a data shift, like some changes in input data distributions or somewhat similar to it. In this case, it makes sense to try to figure out whether we have a shift in our important features or not and see what is the source of shifts. After we understood what is the source of data shifts, we can decide on our next steps. We might want to switch to the other system like rule-based or maybe manual review, or we can run the retraining process and measure whether we trained a good model. When it comes to retraining, it's also very important to check whether we have enough data to retrain, because even if we see that there is some data shifts, which is quite drastic, right? We might just not have enough data to update model, because it's not always like equal things. You might have enough data to detect data shift, data drift, right? But those amount of data might be just not enough to retrain your model. So this is why it's always good to come up with some heuristics, like what is the minimum amount of data you need to retrain your model? We have a very nice blog related to this topic, so if it's relevant to you, I suggest you to take a look. Well, it's always important to check what are your alternatives. Can you actually switch to the previous model maybe, or less precise but more stable model? Maybe you can switch to the manual process if you have quite huge support team, right? Maybe you can use some heuristics, like instead of personal recommendations, create the standard recommendations based on the popularity of products, or just use some non-machine learning based models, for example, first principle models, which take into account some principles of physics or medicine or chemistry, whatever makes sense for your product. Finally, when you have all your alternatives, it makes sense to first evaluate whether any of those alternatives helps you to increase the quality. If it helps, then it makes sense to roll out or switch to this alternative solution. In order to automate this check, and this check should be done, it must be done before the rollout, it's good to have so-called golden set. This golden set is the data set on top of what you can measure model's performance and compare it against the current production model. So the idea of building golden set data is pretty straightforward. It makes sense to include in your golden dataset all relevant segments and classes. If you have some known corner cases or test scenarios, it's very important to include those objects as well. For instance, if you build a ranking system, you can include certain items that always should be ranked high and check whether your newer candidates do it on top of your golden data set. Or if we are working with churn prediction model, we might include some users which are inactive for 10 days because we know that such users should be labeled as a churn, right? Or if some topics are forbidden and we build a chatbot, we might check that model declines to response when it sees such topics. So it's always very use case specific, but it makes sense to invest your time and maybe talk to your domain experts to make sure that your golden data set is good enough, is relevant enough to perform these automated checks. Because if you have well data set, well golden set, you can reuse it for many, many different experiments and even automated quality checks for your new model entity dates and it saves you a lot of time. It's important to build the golden data set in a way that it is representative of both the long-term trends and the recent data and it should be curated to reflect some assumptions about data and domain knowledge. 
Basically, after you checked all these prerequisites, you can come up with your customized logic for retraining models. For instance, start from the model quality check and check did the machine learning model quality drop. If not, do nothing. If yes, check the data quality issues because it's very common that the data quality issues is the reason for models quality drop. Then if there are some technical bugs, first fix them. If not, check whether there is the data drift. If no, or maybe do some better, more detailed technical review for some bugs, process updates, or if there is a data drift, go for the check of the data volume because maybe you have already enough data to rebuild or retrain your model. So if you have enough of data and if you have automated retraining process, then probably you can just try to retrain your data and check whether the updated model works better than the previous one. And if you unfortunately do not have enough data to retrain, you can check whether you have any alternative solutions maybe the previous model or rule-based system or something else like manual review. And if yes, you can check whether this alternative solution is better than the current production model. If no, and the model retraining did not help you to increase the model's performance, then most likely you would need to go to the model review and run a lot of experiments to rebuild your model and maybe do something else like build up the alternative solution. So. That was the example and I would like to sum up what we just discussed. We discussed the different strategies for model retraining, like scheduled retraining or the trigger one. We also discussed that it's good to come up with the automated logic on how you could go through the model's quality, data quality and the retraining process in order to make sure that you always roll out the good model. Scheduled retraining is ok, but it can be a little suboptimal. You might miss the true decay or waste some resources. How to do better? Make sure you evaluate your model properly before deploy. Monitor the quality of production model together with data quality and data shifts. Test your retraining strategy on historical data to make informed choices. And finally tune and automate your retraining approach, but keep humans in the loop. That's all I wanted to share with you today regarding the retraining and our next topic will be reference dataset, how to create and curate it.